going to talk today about creating stunning and beautiful black and white images in Photoshop. But before we dig into the nitty gritty and sort of what happens in Photoshop, I want to talk about actually creating that image, using a camera and photographing the image. Because without a great, beautiful, or interesting image, you're probably not going to have a very good end result. So let's talk about the image first. And creating beautifully, uh, beautiful imagery in general is really just 10% technical know-how and 90% mentality, attitude, vision. So that's the first thing to keep in mind. And I want to lead it off with an amazing quote by a New York City-based photographer named Jay Maisel. He says, if you want to take more interesting pictures, become a more interesting person. And this is something that I think is very important as photographers and even artists and web designers and everything. We need to become more interesting people to design more interesting designs and graphics and capture more interesting pictures. Well, how do I become a more interesting person? You can't just sort of flip a switch and become a more interesting person overnight, but there are things you can do. And I was listening to uh, a, a well-known fashion photographer named Matthew Jordan Smith here in Philadelphia uh, several months ago, and he he went through sort of this list of things that change a person and affect who you are. And at least two of these items on my list he had on his list. I can't remember exactly what his list was. But I've put together this list of three items that I think are going to make you a more interesting person. That is number one, your philosophical and religious beliefs. It's it's sort of the core of who you are. It's your outlook on life. It's do I believe this? Do I believe that? Do I even know what's going on? Um, and that's that's just sort of you. Uh, number two is the people you associate yourself with. I really, really believe that greatness uh, transfers from person to person. And if you surround yourself with great people, it will rub off because your standards will raise. Sort of the bar you shoot for is going to raise and everything in your life begins to conform to this aspiration uh, toward greatness. And you're going to want to be like these great people who you associate with. Whereas if you associate with people who are less talented or still, you know, not quite there or not quite where you want to be, you're going to be sort of playing down to them rather than playing up to these superstars that you want to be like. And number three is the books you read. And this is very important. This is not the movies you watch. This is the books you read. There's a massive literary difference between watching a movie and reading a book. Intellectual difference. There's a huge difference. So the books you read really also changes your outlook and the way people are going to look at you and the way you look at things. And it's all about just really being able to analyze the way that you look at the stuff around you. The way you look at the stuff around you is probably how you're going to photograph it because when you take a picture of something, yes, you're taking a picture of something else, but you're also sort of mirroring the way you see that. And you're, you're in a way taking a picture of yourself and the way you see that. So if you change the way you look at things and life and the world around you, you're going to change the way you see potential photographs. Making yourself a more interesting person you will capture more interesting photographs. So I also want to lead that uh, up with a quote by Chuck Klosterman. Being interesting has been replaced by being identifiable. But the problem with being identifiable is, or what, what's forgotten about being interesting is that in being interesting, you become identifiable. So become interesting first and you will become identifiable. Stop focusing on just being identifiable. What if you're identifiable for being crap? You don't want to be identifiable for that. That's horrible. We don't want that. And lastly, the one technical note is that shooting this location-based photography, landscape uh, photographs, if you shoot landscape or location stuff at all, you know this already, but it is absolutely imperative that you shoot at the correct time of day, which is right around either sunrise or sunset. It's beautiful, soft, amazing light, and it is just a joy to shoot in. And if you can schedule your days or even vacation days, I try to get out in the mornings or evenings and shoot then. You'll get the best photographs and you will love them. It works every time. So with all of that in mind, let's jump into the tutorial. I'm going to jump right over to the bridge and I'm going to grab this photograph here. And this is straight out of camera, .dng, which is a camera raw format. And we're going to open this up in camera raw to start. But just be mindful that you don't need to have a photograph to camera raw image. If, you're, if your image is a JPEG, you can also open it in camera raw in the bridge just by selecting the image and hitting Command or Control R. It's going to pop up the camera raw dialog here. I'm going to have to resize it. I already know that. Um, I'm going to move it into frame here and I'll resize it. And all I want to do here in the camera raw dialog, here we go is I want to reduce contrast. So I'm going to knock the contrast down probably to about negative 60 or so. I like to usually reduce the contrast of an image before I bring it into Photoshop because then in Photoshop I can use adjustment layers and masks and all of that to very selectively and with much more control 
affect the contrast and boost contrast in the way that I want to. I'm also going to bring in an image that's a little bit smaller than 21 megapixels. I'm going to go with 2.8 megapixels, uh, 2000 by 1300 pixels. Hit OK and then open your image. Now you can work with a full size image. I'm just being picky because I'm recording here. So what we're going to do is, well, hope the image opens here. And we're ready to go. So as we go through this, just bear in mind that the settings that I'm using are going to be different for your image. The settings are dependent upon the size of the image, the light in the image, even the colors in the image. So just do what's best for your image. And remember, this is an image you captured. You love this photograph. It's interesting. It means something to you. So treat it like you would treat something that you really like. And don't, don't wreck it by just following my settings exactly to the numbers. Just kind of follow the basic ideas that I'm throwing out there. So before we get started, I'm going to kick things off. I'm going to zoom in on the bumper here. And I just want to get rid of these little smudge marks. I'm going to grab the healing brush. I'm not a big fan of the spot healing brush. I'm going to go with the healing brush. And I'm going to hold down my alt or option key and sample off of the bumper here. I'm going to size my brush down. And I'm just going to touch up these couple little areas. I'm not going to be too overly picky, but I am going to be moderately picky. There we go, so just like that. And even there are a couple little light spots on the macadam here in the parking lot. I'm gonna just clean them up. They might be a slight bit distracting later on. Again, I don't know if they will be or not, but we're just being a little picky just to kind of clean up and uh, get this car looking pristine. All right, great, now that we've done that, what I want to do first is add some contrast. Now remember, we just took contrast away, but I want to have it on its own separate layer here in Photoshop. So I'm going to hop over here to the Adjustments panel, and I'm going to choose adjust or Curves Adjustment. It's going to drop in a Curves Adjustment layer. Because this image is so dominantly darker tones and not a lot of light tones, you can see here on the histogram, most of it is below the 50% gray point there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull down on the line back here, right to about there, and then I'm going to pull about the middle of the line right back to... Uh, that straight initial line running through our curves dialog box. So if I shut it off, you can see we're just giving ourselves a nice little bump of contrast there. Now we want to add a little bit of a mid-tone punch to this image, add some sort of toning contrast. So we're going to do, or excuse me, merge these two layers together up onto a new layer. And the hotkey for that is Control Shift Alt. That'd be Command Shift Option on the Mac E. It's going to grab those two layers, say, all right, I got them, boom, up on their own layer. Now we're going to use the hotkey Control shift or Command shift u to desaturate. Now we're going to go Filter, Other, High Pass. Now what I'm looking for here in the High Pass is I want to start bringing out some of this, see that you can see the shadow detail and the highlight detail running across the hood, really start to make it look like that, that nasty HDR look. That's good in this case, we want that because this is not at all the finished product. So I'm going to go about 8 on this image. On a larger image, this will probably be closer to 15. And I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to set the blend mode here to soft to light. Now that's a little bit too intense. You can see if we shut it off, turn it on, we're getting almost a little bit of a comic-y feel. I don't know how great it looks through the screen capture, but a little, little bit too intense. So I'm going to reduce the opacity somewhere to around 50%. So something like that looks good. Next, we want to add even more contrast. Now, I, well, excuse me, before we add the contrast, we want to make it black and white. And uh, let's do that and then we'll keep talking. So I'm going to go up here to the adjustment layers and I'm going to choose black and white. And I'm going to work with a number of things here. The first thing I want to do is looking at this background here, I really want to start to blow that out. So I'm going to increase the yellows. So I'm going to pull the yellows up. You can see that's affecting the yellows back there. I also want to pull the reds up a bit. Now the reds are really going to start to affect back there. And I'm really watching the side of the car and I see that really starting to light up nicely. So I like the reds up there. The background now, however, is way too blown out. So I'm going to reduce the yellows just a touch to bring back some of that detail. We can check out the greens and see what they do. They're not doing much. We'll just maybe boost them just a tiny bit. The cyans, they've got a lot to do with the car. We're going to increase them a bit. And we're also going to increase the blues a little bit. Not too much. I want to maintain the dark tones on the car. But see this, this amazing soft highlight coming down the hood of the car? I almost want that to be solid white. Not quite solid white, but I want that to be very white by the time we finish. We also have a little bit of magenta down here, which we're not really going to mess with. And there we go. That is our black and white adjustment layer. Now we want to add even more contrast. So we're going to throw a levels adjustment layer in here. And you may be thinking, hey, levels, I can just grab the points and drag them. Nope, we're not going to touch it that way. We're just going to set it to soft light. And that's going to give us a nice kick of contrast right off the bat. A little bit too dark here around the base of the car. And I want to add a different type of contrast next. So we're going to sort of double this contrast down, which means we need to really reduce the opacity. Let's knock the opacity back down somewhere below 50. I'm going to go with, I don't know, maybe about 40. You can see there we go. We're starting to really boost that contrast, looking good. Now I want to use a gradient map. So that's that little gradient icon. And we're going to use a black to white gradient. 
Go ahead and hit OK. Now, the way a gradient map works in a nutshell is this side attaches this color to the darkest area of the image and fades, you know, up here to white being attached to the lightest part of the image. So you can see down here we get black and up there we get white. And if we hit reverse, it just flips that and essentially gives us a negative image. We don't like that though. So we're going to stick with that. And I love gradient maps. I use them all the time. I absolutely uh, love, love, love them. And then this hasn't done a huge amount. It's given us a little kick of contrast, which I'm kind of digging. Let's see what happens if we set this to soft light. It should really boost that contrast even more. Eh, I like it, but again, it's just too dark here. So we'll just knock the opacity down again, somewhere around 30, 40, something like that. All right, that looks pretty good. You can see pre-levels and gradient map, and then post-levels and gradient map. We've given ourselves a really nice amount of contrast. Now, again, I would I had mentioned before that I really want this highlight to be very light. So we're going to use another adjustment layer called Selective Color. And we're going to come in here to Colors, and we're going to choose Whites. So that's just going to attack the whites, the very brightest areas of this image. All right, I'm going to move this over so you can see what happens. And we've got just your cyan, magenta, yellow, black. And if you drag away from cyan, you get red, which is going to be expected. Away from magenta, you get green. Away from yellow, you get blue. Well, if you drag away from black, you get white. Great. So we want to add more white to these highlights. So I'm just going to drag it back. And you can see if I really pull it back, we get a lot of white. That's too much. So I'm going to pull it back to around negative 35, negative 40, maybe negative 50-ish. You can see there. If I shut that off, turn it on, it's just a nice kick of contrast and just a really good punch for those highlights. I love it. All right, so now what we're going to do is a little bit of dodging and burning. Now that you know we kind of see this image, we can selectively really go in and paint in the contrast. So here's how we're going to do that. We're going to go layer, new layer. We're going to just create a brand new layer. We can even call it dodge burn if you like and hit OK. There it is. And we're going to go edit, fill. We're going to choose 50% gray. Hit OK. And hey, everything's disappeared. Don't worry about that. We're going to set this layer to soft light. Now, the beauty of dodging and burning this way, and by the way, this isn't the way I normally dodge and burn, but it's just sort of a quick way to dodge and burn. Um, uh, the other way that I normally dodge and burn is a little bit different. We're not going to get into that now, though. We're just going to do it kind of quick and easy. Uh, we're going to grab the dodge tool. Hotkey is the letter O. All we need is the dodge tool. We're going to reduce the exposure to around, I don't know, 20%, 30%, something like that. You don't want to go over the top. You can tick on protect tones. doesn't really matter in this case. And all we need to do is begin painting in on the highlight areas we want to brighten up. So I want to brighten up the side of this SUV back here. I'm going to kiss, give a kiss of light to the highlight on the side of that car. Maybe even back here if it's still not bright enough where you can brighten that up. I'm going to brighten up these little lighter ocean side grasses or weeds or whatever they are. I'm also going to brighten up the wheels just a touch here. Now I'm not, I'm doing this very, very quickly. Normally you could spend a lot of time dodging and burning if you wanted, but just be careful. And I'm going to brighten up this highlight along the side of the car and on the windows and even the highlight coming down the hood like so looks cool. I'm going to brighten up the very top of the headlight and these areas here that are already kind of bright across the top of the grills like so right here on the side of the hood. That looks great. And I'm going to brighten up the side of that headlight. Also down here along the base of the bumper, we want to brighten that up a little bit. And then in order to darken up the shadows, just hold down your Alt or Option key and just paint in whatever you want to be darker. So here along the bottom of the headlights, this crease here on the hood, the other crease on the other side of the hood, right here on the front of the wheel well, actually, I'm letting go of the Alt or Option key. I really want to define that wheel well, so I'm going to paint the highlight a little bit bigger on the back and darken up the front. And that's pretty much it. That looks pretty good for now. We can see there's before dodging and burning, there's after. And again, you can spend a lot, a lot of time doing this, so just be careful with it. And you can always tone back the opacity if need be. Now, the last step is just a little bit of sharpening. So we're going to use that huge hotkey again, Control shift alt or command shift option e It's going to duplicate all of our layers up to one layer. Then we're going to go Filter, Other, High Pass. And all I'm looking for is a very little bit. For this size image, probably 1 or maybe 1.5. Actually, 1 looks good. So I'm going to hit OK. And if you're using a larger image, this might be two, this might be three. Usually, even on my biggest images, I don't go above about three, 3.5. I'm going to set this to soft light. And then really, because I want it to be sort of hyper sharp, I'm just going to duplicate this layer, Command or Control J. And there you have it. That is our finished completed black and white. We can see there's the image we started with. There's the image we finished with. So a very cool black and white. And these techniques can be used to convert landscape photographs to black and white automotive photographs to black and white portraits, anything you want because you have such a high level of control over what becomes black and white and then the contrast that gets dumped into the different parts of your images. So that's it for this one. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you so much for sticking around and watching. I hope you take the techniques and the information in this video and use it and create some awesome photographs. So that's it for this one. Make sure you go check out the site. That's www.tutvid.com for more great free video tutorials. Thanks for watching.